Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. And just to let you know that this podcast is available on my website, you can have basically continuous play, all of the recordings, uh, without any adverts. Uh, so thank you, that's there. Also, um, I hope you're well, really. That's the main thing. And I'm trying to do more regular recordings for this podcast at the moment. Uh, as I feel that more relaxation is required. That's what I think, so that's why I'm doing it. I've got a technique to do today, so I'm not going to be waffling on. I'm also not going to be sitting here talking softly for half an hour. Um, although we'll be doing both of those things again tomorrow, one of those things. But today, I'm going to do a relaxation exercise. And it's something, it doesn't take long to do really. As long as you've got, well, it, it takes both your hands to do it. But you could also do it with both your feet. So you could use your right hand and your left hand. If you're unable to use a right hand or left hand for uh, whatever physical reason, then maybe use your right foot and your left foot. You could also use your right thigh or your left thigh. So it doesn't have to be a hand or a foot, but ideally it's, it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to ask you to clench your fists in a minute. Of course, you can't do that with your thigh, but you can clench the muscles in your thigh. And with your feet, you can, it's not really a fist, is it? But you can sort of curl your toes up, maybe. But only do this if it's comfortable. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I know there's a lot of people that have physical uh, chronic pain or things like that. So I'm here to reduce chronic pain and to increase relaxation. And that's reducing chronic pain is a byproduct of listening to relaxation sessions. Even though they're not labelled chronic pain relief, these are good for chronic pain relief. So there you go. And so I'm going to focus on my hands. But as I said, you can adapt it however you choose. Or what we could do is perhaps we could use both. So I could I could do my hands, then do my feet, just to give you an idea of doing both. That's my squeaky chair. So you don't necessarily, excuse me for your you don't necessarily need to listen to me to do this. But it might be nice to do it with somebody. And I'm, I do what I say I'm doing when I'm talking about it, usually. So if I'm doing a relaxation session, like yesterday's one, for example, talking about... Uh, strengthening the immune system and I was doing that with you while I was talking so you know I don't just sit here watching television and just talking reading off a piece of paper or something this is doing it while I'm talking so the idea behind this is based on biological fact, biology. So 
your right hand is controlled by the left part of your body, of your brain. Your left hand is controlled by the right side of your brain. That's just a biological, scientific fact. A bit strange, but it's true. So that means you can stimulate and activate the left side of your brain by moving a part of your body on the right side. For example, your right fist. Or to stimulate the right side of your brain, you could make a fist with your left hand. And I was actually doing it then while we were talking. Now with anxiety, stress, tension, very often one part of the brain is being dominant in that moment. Especially when it comes to fear and emotions. So, part of this technique, this exercise, or whatever you want to call it, is about evening it out as my voice becomes croakier <clears throat> for some reason. It's about smoothing out and almost returning the scales back to the normal balance so that the right and the left hand side of your brain are both equally active instead of one being more active than the other so that it balances so that the, that fear, that distress that was there before is now dissolved and you feel balanced Because the energy is now spread out. And the weight that you were feeling before is now being held. And so just by one hand it's being held by two hands. So instead of trying to lift that cupboard or that table on your own, you've got another person helping you, which makes it easy. So what was originally um, a very difficult task becomes really, really simple and easy and manageable. So you've got your right hand which stimulates the left side of your brain. You've got your left hand that stimulates the right side of your brain. And your left side of your brain controlling the right hand and the right side of your brain controlling your left hand and it doesn't feel that way see I'll make a fist with my right hand for me it's me controlling that but it's it's the left part of my brain that's doing the actual thing but everything's moving so quickly that my intention is for it to happen and my brain does what I ask it to do. So almost like my mind is telling my brain, so my consciousness is willing my right hand to move. My left part of my brain listens to that, sends those messages down my spinal cord, through my nervous system, and my right hand moves instantly the same with the right hand to the right hand side of the brain for the left hand and you may think well, this is very boring Jason could you please get on with it and my answer to that is no because this is relaxing <laughs> I, suppose I can't come on here and just be really quick and then it's done I like, like to take my time I like to just relax when we do these things. It's part of the process. It might be a little bit boring at times, 
but it's also relaxing. And there's something to be said for having patience as well. Because sometimes I myself have found that maybe I've caused anxiety in myself, caused stress in myself due to lack of patience, due to wanting things to be done now, not wanting to wait, when actually if I'd have been a bit more patient with myself and not pushed myself so hard or not expected everything else and everyone else to do exactly what I want when I want it. Which would be the ideal world, wouldn't it? If everybody did what we wanted when we wanted them to do it. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? For everyone. It wouldn't work. But, you know, for an individual it would be quite nice, I imagine. But it's never happened yet, so... But then why would you want other people to do stuff when you've got this body of yours? And just by imagining and just by wanting your thumb on your right hand to move, it does. And instead of thinking, well, it's because I'm moving it, what's the big whoop? Well, actually, there's a huge whoop. You're consciously wanting your right thumb to move. Your left hand side of your brain has to send that signal down your spinal cord, through your nervous system, into the nerves of your right thumb for it to move. So anyone that has control issues wants to be in control. You are in control. You're in control of yourself. You can control what your arms do. Most people can control what their body does. I know there's people that can't, but I'm talking generally. If I decide I want to move my right eyelid, not not move it, but close it rather. I'm not going to move it to my elbow, but I can close it and open it. I've got complete control over that. So maybe you can relax into the idea that we do all have a lot of control without needing to be controlling, not even to ourselves. So you've got your right hand and your left hand. All it is really is making a fist and then relaxing it. That's it. Now you might think, why is it taking 14 minutes for me to explain something as simple as that? Well, I'd like to paint a picture. But I can't paint, so I have to do it with <laughs> with recordings instead. So what I'm going to ask you to do, if you haven't already done it, to close your eyes, sit down in a chair. Or sit down in a chair first, otherwise you might fall on your bum. Sit down in a chair first, then close your eyes. Make sure that the chair can support your body so it has armrests. So if you was to fall asleep, you didn't fall over. You need to make sure that you're safe and comfortable at all times. And with your hands, or your arms may be resting on the armrests of the chair, or maybe your hands resting on your knees. I just want you to turn your hands over so the palms are facing up. And then clench your hands into a fist. But only as comfortable as you're able to do it. Now I've got a damaged right hand so I have to be a little bit careful because it hurts a bit if I do too much of a fisty thing. 
but you know, do it as comfortable as it feels, but so there's some tension there. And just hold it for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. And just let go. But when you let go, just literally allow your hands to open on their own. So you're not just suddenly pushing all your fingers out flat. It's just allowing it to unravel almost, almost like the petals of a flower opening up in the sunlight. Just notice how your hands feel as they're resting on your knees. Knowing that your right hand and your left hand are both connected to opposite sides of the brain. So when you relax your hands, you relax your brain. And there's that connection. I can actually feel it in the top of my head. It's just a, a gentle... It feels almost like there should be a little buzzing sound, like a mmm, but there isn't. But it's that kind of a feeling. Just a gentle... Gentle kind of vibration, but not physical, more just like a release. My eyelids are very relaxed right now. I almost feel like I don't even have a face, which might sound a bit weird considering I'm talking, but it's, it feels that way, it feels like all there is, is my hands and my brain. So again, I'm going to ask you to make a fist with both of your hands, only so it's comfortable, counting to five, one, two, three, four, five, and letting your hands unravel on their own. So basically just stopping gripping, but not opening your hands manually, letting them just, I mean you can actually feel the fingers gently opening. And my, my fingers feel like they're creaking a little bit. sort of a release of electricity and energy from my finger joints. And although I'm talking, there is literally nothing going on in my mind, which won't surprise a lot of people who listen to me regularly maybe, but I feel very calm in my mind. And even though I know logically there's two sides to my brain, the right side, the left side, both feeling relaxed, it almost feels as if I don't know, it just feels like it's one, just peaceful. Just gentle, calm. I 
This feels nice, I like this. We should do this more often. Yeah. In fact, I want to do it again. So I'm going to um, make a fist of both my hands if you want to join me. Again, if you're not able to use your fists, your hands, you could use your feet, clenching your toes, or you could clench a part of your body on both sides, like maybe your shoulders or your chest or your legs, just so it's both sides of your body, of your brain being activated, being relaxed. Now, I'm going to make a fist of both my hands. My right hand doesn't hurt anymore, which is nice. Counting from one, two, three, four, five, and just allow the hands even more gently to open on their own. Putting no effort into opening them. <laughs> just, it just feels nice. It's not just relaxing, it's actually pleasurable. And I can feel that pleasure, not just in my hands, but in my brain, actually inside my head. It feels pleasurable, which is a bit strange, but a nice, a nice feeling. The whole body feels relaxed. And what I've noticed is this sense of relaxation that I've got isn't making me feel tired probably would if I was lying down but then you know lying down I could I could listen to a, an air display of fighter jets going past and probably still fall asleep but I just feel very relaxed in fact my hands have just gone floppy they won't even stay on my knees anymore, they've just almost rolled over because my arms have seemed to have joined in with that sense of relaxation. Yeah, I'm not tired, but I am relaxed. Really, really relaxed. It feels safe. It feels safe. And really positive without well, without any intentional positivity added. I didn't mention feeling positive or feeling safe or anything prior to doing this. I'm getting that feeling, feeling of optimism, but without a focus, not thinking about any particular thing, but just a general sense of brightness. Uplifting feeling, very light, very light, as in not heavy, but very light. I can see the benefit of both 
listening to this recording and doing it, but also doing it on your own. Of course, it would be a lot quicker on your own. Something that you could do maybe at work. If you've got a spare couple of minutes, five minutes, you could do it in your car, in the car park. You know, once you're at work or do it on the sofa at home. It doesn't take long. Or of course you can listen to me and you can do it with me. And there's the it might sound a little bit a little bit strange. I, I am a bit strange, that's fine. But when you listen to this online there's going to be someone else listening to it at the same time. Very likely. Someone somewhere else in the world is listening to this. So you're sharing the experience. You're sharing the relaxation and calmness. of your mind and of your brain relaxing and evening out so that both sides are supporting you emotionally And of course you can do this exercise as many times. So you can clench your fists another ten times if you want. It's up to you. Do it as many times as you feel is necessary. Knowing that every time you do it, your brain will relax more. Both sides of your brain. Causing you to feel calmer, stronger and more relaxed, more able to deal with your day emotionally. relaxed and safe now and it brings us to the end of this recording thank you for listening and I will speak to you again tomorrow. In the meantime, remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.